Hello and welcome to this video presenting the European competitions and how to become a European official. In this video we will present you first the European institutions and the career opportunities. Then we will present you the European competitions including the conditions for registration, the competition process and the tests. Finally, we will give you tips and advice to be successful in the competition. First, let me introduce also competitions. Also competitions is a training company specialized in the preparation of the European competitions. Our offices are located in Lille in northern France and in Brussels in the heart of the European quarter. We are the leading trainer of future European officials. Every year, for over 15 years, we have prepared many thousands of candidates for European institution competitions. Our success rate is high. According to the results of a recent survey, more than 25% of candidates who prepared with also competitions have passed the admission tests. This figure is impressive considering that the success rate is usually closer to 3%. Also Competitions has worked with many European partners. Our customers include the European institutions and their contractual agents, European agencies and joint research centres, ministries of foreign affairs, universities and all the students that would like to prepare for European competitions. We are recommended on the website of EPSO. EPSO stands for European Personal Selection Office and is the European body responsible for organising the competitions for the whole of the European institutions. You will note the website for EPSO that will be very useful to get all the information on the competitions. Would you like to become a European official? Let's travel together in the heart of the European institutions and discover the various career opportunities. The European institutions employ over 55,000 officials and agents coming from the 28 EU member states. The European Commission is the institution that employs the most people, around 34,000. Most of them work in Brussels, in fields as various as job creations, environment, protection or citizens' rights. Among the European Commission employees, over 2,000 of them work in Luxembourg or in other European countries, such as ISPRA in Italy, where one of the main joint research centres is based. The Commission also has representative offices in the 28 EU member states and over 120 delegations worldwide, from Peru to Papua New Guinea. The European Parliament is the Citizens' Assembly. With the Council, the European Parliament passes most of the European laws as well as the EU budget. The European Parliament employs over 6,000 people, mostly based in Brussels, Strasbourg and Luxembourg. There are also offices throughout the European Union. The Council is the executive entity that is key to the European Union. Mostly in coordination with the European Parliament, it passes acts that affect directly the citizens' life and have an important impact on an international scale. The Council employs 3,500 people based in Brussels. The Court of Justice is responsible for interpreting EU laws to make sure it is applied in the same way in all EU countries. The Court of Justice is located in Luxembourg and employs more than 4,500 people who are mostly lawyers, interpreters, 
lawyer linguists and computer specialists. The Court of Auditors is responsible for controlling EU finances. Its auditing role applies on the EU budget and EU politics, mostly in fields linked to growth and employment, added value, public spending, environment and actions for the climate. The Court of Auditors is located in Luxembourg and employs over 800 people. The Economic and Social Committee and the Committee of the Regions are two consultative bodies of the European Union. The Economic and Social Committee represents civil society and its various representatives, while the Committee of the Regions represent the local and regional European authorities. These two committees employ together 1,700 people, of which 500 work in translation. They're both located in Brussels. The European agencies and other bodies employ more than 6,000 people th based throughout Europe. For example, there is the European Food Safety Authority in Parma in Italy, as well as the European Monitoring Centre for Drugs and Drug Addiction in Lisbon in Portugal. Working for the European institutions offers many advantages. Working for the European institutions means working in an environment with 24 languages and 28 nationalities. You will probably need to live in Brussels or Luxembourg that are both cosmopolitan and multicultural towns. You will also have the opportunity to visit various countries and meet people of all backgrounds. Do you want to have a stimulating and growing career? Working in the European institutions means building Europe's future for more than 500 million citizens. You will be able to take an active role in development aid, in environment protection, in health and in consumer security, in cultural policy. There is a wide variety of fields. The European institutions encourage career development of their staff by offering a range of flexible careers. Throughout your career, you will most likely carry out different responsibilities in a wide variety of fields. Working in the European institutions means developing new skills every day. The European institutions offer language courses to allow everyone to communicate in three European languages at least. They also offer a wide range of trainings so that you can improve your personal skills or update your knowledge in your field. European institutions offer attractive advantages such as a competitive starting salary, a relocation allowance, good health insurance and interesting pension plan. Depending on your personal situation, you might be entitled to further allowances, such as an expatriation, dependent child or transport allowance. In terms of salaries, an assistant will start at €3,400 growth a month. An administrator with no professional experience will have a starting salary of over €4,300 gross a month. Being a European official also gives you the guarantee of job security. European officials can have either the administrator or the assistant grade. Administrators draft policies, implement EU laws, analyse and advise. There is a wide variety of administrator profiles. An external relation policy officer may, for example, take part in negotiations of bilateral agreements between the EU and third countries. An economist may coordinate the economic policies of the EU member states. A lawyer may draft a decision paper for the EU Court of Justice. In short, whatever your background may be, 
there is a wide variety of career opportunities. Assistants generally perform supporting tasks. They play an important role in the internal management of the institutions. For example, a financial management assistant will perform tasks as different as drawing up budget estimates, planning and managing public procurement procedures, or carrying out financial and operational management of contracts or subsidies. Are you interested in working for the European institutions? Let's see how you can become a European official. European officials are recruited through open competitions. EPSO is the body of the European institutions organising the competitions. Competitions are organised each year in cycles. The period between the publication of the notice of competition and the recruitment generally last nine months. The administrator competitions start in spring. The fields are different every year. The assistant competitions start in winter. In 2013, they were open in three fields. Accountancy and financial management, economics and finances, and legal matters. The linguist competitions start in summer. They are organised according to the needs by languages. The specialist competitions are organised throughout the year on a case-per-case -case basis. For more information, we recommend you visit the EPSO website on a regular basis and register to our newsletter on our website. The next administrator competition will take place in spring 2014. There are two main competitions, one for audit and one for all profiles. Please refer to the EPSO calendar and the notice of competition for all the information related to these competitions. To register for European competition, you have to meet a few conditions. First, you should have the nationality of one of the 28 EU member states. You also need to speak at least two of the 24 official EU languages, as two languages are required in the competitions tests. One of the two languages must be English, French or German. According to the competition grade, you should have at least completed secondary education at a level giving access to higher education or obtained a university degree. Assistant competitions usually require work experience relevant to the position. This is also the case for administrator competitions. The registration conditions can vary from one competition to another. That is the reason why we advise you to read the Notice of Competition carefully. The Notice of Competition is published on the EPSO website on the day registration opens. Since the 2010 reform, the competition tests are no longer based on knowledge but on competencies. Candidates must show that they possess seven or eight key competencies. The first of these competencies is analysis and problem solving. The candidates must show that he's capable of identifying a problem and offering an appropriate way to resolve it. Another competency is communicating. The candidate must be able to communicate clearly and precisely, adapting to the nature of the person he is addressing, such as general public or professionals. The third competency is delivering quality and results. European officials, especially administrators, are assessed on objectives. They are free to decide how to reach them. One of their main objectives is to improve the quality of the service supplied to the EU citizens while complying with set procedures. Another competency is learning and development. The European institutions encourage the development of competencies and learning throughout the careers. 
European officials should try to improve both their own competencies and their colleagues. The next competency is prioritising and organising. Candidates must show that they are capable of organising their workload in a flexible way while prioritising tasks. Another competency is resilience. Candidates must show that they can remain positive and act effectively in a changing work environment, such as increasing workload, new position, new manager. The next competency is working with others. The notion of working with others is important to European institutions. Candidates must show that they value working with others over individual action. The last competency, leadership, is only assessed in administrator competitions. A manager must be capable of treating his colleagues calmly and with respect. He must encourage his team so that they can give the best of themselves. Keep these competencies in mind. Before taking part in a competition, think about how you have used these competencies in your professional or private life. Also, think about how you could apply them if you became a European official. Let's now go through the competition process. The competitions happen in four stages. Registration is done online. First, you have to create your account on the EPSO website. This account will be the one to use for any EPSO competitions you may take part in. You should then complete your application for the competition that you have chosen. This application includes a very detailed CV and your motivations. This information is very important for the third phase of the competition. The jury will reject your application if it doesn't match the profile they are looking for. A piece of advice, check the competition calendar on the EPSA website on a regular basis and do not wait too long before registering. Usually, registration closes one month after the notice of competition has been published. You also have to book in advance your test for the EPSO Centre. Most of the competitions start with admission tests. These tests aim to decrease significantly the number of candidates invited to go through the other tests in the assessment centre. The success rate varies according to the competitions. They are usually lower than 5%. The admission tests include logic tests, situational judgment tests and for assistant competition, competency tests. We will go through them in more details in a few minutes. Assessment centre tests are much less selective. The success rate is around one-third. They aim at assessing the candidate's general competencies, such as analysis and problem solving, or working with others. Assessment tests include a case study and a series of tests taking place over one day at the assessment centre. These tests vary according to the category of the competition. The candidates who pass all these tests are included on the reserve list. This list is then used by the institutions to recruit their staff. The admission tests, also called CBT, are done on computers. They are held in the specialised centres. These centres are based in all EU member states and in other countries in the world. All the tests take the form of multiple choice questions. They are timed. The reasoning tests are taken in the first language, which must be one of the official EU languages. All the other tests, as well as the assessment tests, are taken in a second language. 
This second language must be English, French or German. The second language must be different from the first language. For example, if you chose English as your first language, you would have to choose either French or German as your second language. To be successful at the admission tests, you must reach the pass mark for all the tests and have one of the best cumulative scores over the admission tests as a whole. In general, at least 80% correct answers are needed to be successful in the admission tests. The verbal reasoning test assesses your ability to understand and analyse verbal information. It consists of 20 multiple choice questions. Each question contains a text and four possible answers. For each question, you must choose the answer that is deduced from the text. The total duration of the test is 35 minutes. This means that the average time per questions is 1 minute 45. Here is a question example. Try to answer it. The correct answer will show in 1 minute 45. The verbal reasoning test is a logic test. To be successful, you must be capable of analysing a text and understand the meaning of a statement. You should also master some of the rules of verbal logic so you can decide in which case a statement can or cannot be deduced from the text. To save time, you also have to be capable of identifying quickly which of the possible statements are more likely to be correct and read text in a selective manner. With our courses, our books and our online tests, you will learn how to master all these techniques and be successful at the test. The numerical reasoning test assesses your ability to understand and analyse numerical data. It consists of 10 multiple choice questions. Usually, each question is accompanied by a table or a graph. For each question, you must choose the correct answer from five possible answers. The total duration of the test is 20 minutes. This means you have, on average, two minutes per question. You can use a calculator. Here is a question example. Try to answer it. The correct answer will show in two minutes.
The numerical reasoning test is not only a math test. To be successful, you must be capable of reading correctly the information in a statement and interpreting correctly a table or graph in order to set and solve the equations. You have to master some basic math concepts such as proportions, variation rates, and or averages. In order to answer within the set time, you also have to avoid long calculation wherever possible and avoid systematic use of the calculator. Once again, all these techniques can be learned. The abstract reasoning test assesses your ability to solve problems grasp complex ideas, and develop strategies. It consists of 10 multiple choice questions. Each question is composed by a series of five diagrams containing geometric shapes that are repeated or modified according to a logical sequence. For each question, you have to identify the underlying logic and find among five options the correct diagram that completes the series. The total duration of the test is 10 minutes. This means an average of one minute per question. Here is a question example. Try to answer it. The correct answer will show in one minute. The abstract reasoning test is a logic test. To be successful, you must be capable of establishing analogies between shapes and different combinations of shapes. You must know how to spot changes, for example, color change, movement, superposition of shapes. You must also master certain notions of geometry, such as rotation, translation and symmetry. Once again, the abstract reasoning test is a question of method and practice. The situational judgment test assesses your behaviour and decision-making capabilities in a working environment. It consists of 20 multiple choice questions. Each question describes a scenario based on a work situation and gives a set of possible actions you might take in response. You must choose the action you believe is most effective and the one you believe is least effective. The total duration of the test is 30 minutes. This means an average of 1 minute 30 per question. Here is an example question. Try to answer it. The correct answers will show in 1 minute 30.
To be successful at the situational judgment test, you must approach each question as a role play exercise and set aside your own experience at work. You have to answer each question using only the information given in the scenario and what is expected of you in terms of competencies and good work practice. You must also be capable of ranking the actions according to the most appropriate criteria degree of problem resolution, degree of priority, life positions. All this can be learned. Now, let's look at the third phase of the competition, the tests in assessment center. The candidates who fulfill the admission conditions and who obtain the best results in the admission tests, which is usually between 80% and 90% of correct answers, are invited to take part in the second part of the tests, the assessment tests. They take part in Brussels generally over a day and a half. These tests in assessment centre are aimed to test six or seven key competencies that we described before. The types of tests vary according to the category of the competition. All candidates take part in a case study a group exercise and a structured interview. The candidates for AST competitions also have an ETRA test and the ones for AD competitions an oral presentation. The case study is a written test related to the competition field. You have to answer questions based on the information in the file and on your specific knowledge of the field. The structured interview aims at gathering the relevant information on your general competencies. It is mostly based on your experience. The oral presentation is an individual test in which you will have to draw a proposition based on a fictitious problem linked to work situation. After the analysis of the documents, you will have to present your ideas orally. The group exercise starts with an individual exercise. You have to deal with a certain amount of information. You will then meet the other participants to discuss together the results and reach a collective decision. The e-tray test is done on computer. You have to answer a series of messages based on the information located in an inbox. Do you want to become a European official? Let's see together how to be successful at the competitions. To be successful at the competition, you will have to prepare diligently over a few weeks. The number of weeks depends on the starting level of the candidate. The main thing is to organize yourself efficiently and progress in steps while remaining confident. All the tests are timed. The biggest difficulty for most candidates is to answer correctly all the questions within the set time. It is a prerequisite to pass the admission tests. Therefore, it is necessary to acquire automatisms. For this, you have to study and understand the methodology specific for each test. How? By attending courses or by working with our books. We are the only ones to offer such a thorough and detailed methodology for each test. Our methods have been tried and tested with success on thousands of candidates. Remember that our success rate for the admission tests is 25% compared to an average of 3% for all candidates. Once automatisms have been acquired, you have to practice in conditions similar to those of the competition with the online tests. On our website, you will find many tests that are similar to the EBSO ones. We prepare candidates for all the admission tests, verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, abstract reasoning, situational judgment, and for AST competitions, accuracy and precision, and prioritizing and organizing. 
we offer a full range of teaching tools. Books to study at your own pace. Courses to benefit from our trainer's expertise and advice. Online tests for you to practice and test yourself. All our training tools are complementary. The questions in our books, courses and online tests are all different. All our training tools are available both in English and French and for all the admission tests. We have books available for each admission test. Each book includes a comprehensive methodology with many examples and a few practice tests with detailed correction. Our books are all available both in English and French and can be purchased on our website or in bookstores. During the courses, the trainer starts by explaining the methodology for the specific test. Then the candidate practices on the time test. The test questions are similar to those set in the competitions organized by EPSO. When time is up, the trainer goes through the detailed correction. All our courses are done using PowerPoint presentation. We have three different types of courses. Face-to-face -face courses usually take place in Brussels over one, two or three days. They are interactive courses and candidates can ask the trainer questions. For the candidates that cannot attend, we offer similar courses in webinars. In the comfort of your own home or elsewhere, candidates follow the distance training on their computer. The course is interactive. The candidates can ask the trainer questions via a chat box available on the training software. For those who would like even greater flexibility, we offer online courses that are online recorded videos. The content in online courses is similar to the one in face-to-face -face or live distance courses. Candidates can access the online course anytime for a duration of three weeks after purchase. On our website, we have a wide variety of online tests for each admission test and for all categories of competitions. All our questions are similar to those set in the EPSO competitions. The interface for our online tests is similar to the one used by EPSO for the computer-based tests. You can visit our website and register to our newsletter to receive the latest updates on upcoming competitions, trainings and special discounts. You can also visit our Facebook page. Good luck and see you soon on also competitions.